So today, folks, we are going to be fitting this. It is the Hex Easy Can, and it says on the box it is an accessory manager for bikes that have a CAN bus system, and obviously the BMW has. So it's an accessory manager, and just think of it as an electronic fuse computer kind of thing, just protecting all your expensive equipment on board the bike. So what do we get in the box? Well, first off, we get a very nice box, and then in the box we have the Easy Can itself. There we go, nice looking bit of kit. We have a selection of zip ties and plugs and Velcro bits and pieces. And then we have some information about the latest software and installation details together with the QR codes as well. So that's what we get in the box. So without further ado, let's go over to the bike and fit it on the bike. But before we get going, a Big shout out to three people in particular. I put a bit of a SOS out on the channel yesterday as I didn't know how to fit the uh, easy can to the bike. So a big shout out to Stevie, Mike and John just for giving us a little bit of a heads up as to where it should go. So before we do leap over the bike, basically this is a brand new BMW 2022 model. Had it for a couple of weeks now. So we're just uh, first week of July and basically we're uh, under the rear pillion seat, or the pillion seat because it's on the rear anyway isn't it, so where you had what they call the RCD, the tyre pressure monitor unit which is about the size of a cigarette packet, it's actually been removed from the BMW itself so it's either on the bike somewhere else or they've removed it and installed the tyre pressure monitor software somewhere else, piggybacked it somewhere else within all the electronic wizardry on the BMW. So I have got the TPMS on my bike, it does work, so there is some software controlling it somewhere on the bike. So I will just explain to you uh, what the issue was, but without further ado, let's go over to the bike and I'll show you. Haha, <laughs> let's go. I actually need to get out on the KTM, so when I get back from the UK working at the end of this week, I think I'd better take it out for a bit of a run actually. Anyway, so there are two ways to do this. There is the short version and the long version. I'm gonna go through the long version, which will just add about another 10 or 15 minutes uh, to the whole work process. Hopefully uh, it will take no more than 30 minutes. So that's the timeline we're looking at, 30 minutes. So what we need to do firstly is uh, remove the front seat and the rear seat. So let's do that now. So stopwatch is running, that is one minute and 30 to undo those four Torx T40. So let's whip this somewhere safe. And next, remove the base plate. So that is two minutes to undo those four Torx T40s. And then you can just remove the plastic base unit away. You can leave it in situ, but if you're gonna leave it in situ, folks, it is a plastic base tray. And just this section here, if you're gonna start putting your fingers under here to insert a cable tie through, if that's the method you wanna do, just be very careful because that is very sharp. And I've already cut myself on that when I had a look at it yesterday. So yeah, just be careful of that bit of plastic. It is very sharp. So that's it, it's taken us five minutes to get good access to here. So this is a method that I would use in reality. So let's have a little bit of a closer look, shall we, and let you know what we're talking about. So all these Torx T40s have had medium thread lock put in it. So you might get a bit of debris in the holes. So just blow them away. And then when you come to refit it all, yeah, just put a little bit of blue medium strength uh, thread lock back on them as well. Uh, so here's the issue then. So I had a look at it yesterday. Uh, this is a week 19 build 2022, so it's uh, pretty current actually, as current as you can get. So you've got the lean angle sensor here, the Bosch lean angle sensor, and on other versions of the bike before this one was built, and certainly looking at the Hex Easy Cam uh, website, and indeed the uh, Denali Can Smart website as well. In fact, the Denali Can Smart system is actually made by uh, hex easy can so they're, they're exactly the same item more or less um, when i looked at those websites they didn't really have information showing pictures of the bike without the tire pressure monitor unit which actually should sit in here i've got the two holes for it where the cigarette packet sized unit would sit and that's what all the other uh, sections on the website make reference to but my issue was it wasn't here and three chaps came to my rescue my rescue yesterday on the internet so what bmw have done is they've done away with the unit obviously the software has been piggybacked onto something else what i have no idea or they've put the tire pressure monitor unit somewhere else 
haven't got a Scooby. I took all this off uh, earlier on today just to see if they had hidden it up here, but it's not. It's actually not on the bike at all. So what they've got is they've got this label here, which is the RCD. So there's a, a plug here with zip tie and it's got a dust cover on there. So what we need to do is cut the zip tie. I've tried to see if there's any way we can remove this plug from its perch, but you can't. The clip on there is actually it's almost like a permanent clip, you can't get rid of it. So I did try folks, so apologies there. I, I failed on that one, didn't I? So what we need to do is uh, cut the zip tie, take it off, and then we'll start putting the easy can back in here. So it's, it is actually a very, very simple job to do. So let's crack on then, shall we? Got me trusty snips and just remove the cable tie. That's it. So that's the cable tie removed. And basically this cable tie, all it does it loops through the clip here. So to remove the dust cap, what we need to do is push on the lower section and pull the cap off, as simple as that. So here's the hex easy can then. And this is the plug that we're not gonna be using. It's uh, got a green collar to it. And if we put them together, you'll see that they're exactly the same. So the dust cap that we put, pulled off here, we'll just replace onto the hex easy can, which is one that we're not gonna be using. And there we go. So that is secure, that's not gonna go anywhere. So that is basically a blanking plug to uh, keep that free of dirt and debris, but we're not gonna be using that one on the system, uh, on the install. So now we've got the dust cap on, we're just gonna put the other plug into the RDC plug. So it'll only go in sort of one way. So on this plug here, you've got a little bit of a, a protruding part at the top. So that, that little bit will slot into the uh, release mechanism and it, it may may click I suppose when you push it in no so that's it in so it only goes in one way so that's what we're left with folks so that's wired up so we've only got one wire from the hex easy can going into the RDC connector plug and then the other one we're not using and that's got the dust cap cover on it which was on this plug here so what we've got to do now is feed the power cable this power cable under here and then wire it up to battery, and that's pretty much the job done. So a handy tip, folks, is to get the power connector rings, get a long zip tie, don't do anything with it, just feed it through the rings, and then we're gonna use that to fish through the bar under here, and then pull it through. You can take the rubber cap off if you want, but there is enough room to waggle it about and get it through. Um, you can actually leave the base plate on and this is this is basically what you're doing when you do that so just waggle it about a bit a little bit and you'll find an area where it will just come through like that so if you leave that base plate on folks that's what you're all you're doing is just fishing it through there so that's pretty much that's nearly the install done in reality so moving along then just to speed things up i've removed the trim along here very straightforward, two T25s, and then the battery cover has only got one T25 up there as well. So just remove those, and what I've done is I just routed the cable through this way under the bar here. I've already installed this in a previous video, so I've just moved that out of the way, and then the cable sits quite nicely. Just loops out of the ECU, I think this bit is here, so it loops quite nicely out of there. And then I've just used the cable tie trick so with a cable tie, just fed a cable tie through the two loops here and then just fed it through down here behind the frame here. If you want to put some tape on there so save you scratching it, feel free to do so. And then what I did do, just to make things a little bit easier, I did remove the fuse using a set of pliers just to pull the fuse out. And then that way it just means you can pull the dust cap off and then the whole thing is a little bit thinner uh, to pull through the back here. And then all we've got to do is eventually connect these terminals to the battery. So just starting to refit stuff. So hex easy can then. I just put some of the 3M Velcro on the back there. I've used a little bit of methylated spirits just to clean this area of any grease. So we get a good, good fit so it sticks well. And this is what it looks like. So that's where that's going to sit. I've already tried it. And then the plug, uh, the RCD that was clipped onto here with the zip tie, that can't be zip tied anywhere. So it's just going to sit here. 
you could I suppose if you wanted to put a zip tie around there and then the rest of the cabling here will sit all quite nicely beneath the the base plate and then we will connect it to the battery so what I think I'm going to do is reinstall everything now and then all we've got to do is connect to the battery and that is job done so that's a base plate on and now we're going to fit the grab rail back on now nearly there so that's the grab rail back now what I'm going to do is in case you're wondering that's my plug for my heated seats in the rear and then I've got one down here for my front seat as well so I'm just going to put the pillion seat on just to make sure it's fitting right and nothing's going to snag on it but yeah happy with that folks so yeah that's been a good install so just got to connect it up to the battery now so yeah nearly there ha <laughs> ha nearly there another five minute job so here's the most important thing for it's connecting the easy can up to the battery itself so if you saw my previous video I told you the reasons why we take the negative off first and then the positive and then connect the positive next and then the negative last so if we touch any metal work we don't cause any short circuits so and I've got a little bit of cardboard just to make sure we're not gonna touch the terminals there's the negative cable put my cardboard there There's always something, isn't there? So let's just take that off. And I think I'm just going to feed that negative terminal, that cable, just towards the back. If I can. And then last but not least, just screw the negative terminal back on so everything's nice and secure. So all I need to do now is just insert the fuse. So pop the fuse back in weatherproof cap on and then because I've got it's quite busy in here with the Optimate fuse as well just going to push that behind there and that is job done hopefully it's going to fit yes both the panels on and it's a nice tidy job so just tidying things up then I did have a zip tie around the Optimate charging cable so I'm just going to cut that zip tie and then put a new one so both of them are tied together so there we go just feed that through just going to feed that through and then zip tie if i can get it to go flush that's going to be even better that's great so folks surprisingly there ain't much space under here so what have we got then so everything's now connected so the ignition on the bike is off but you know it's working properly the easy can will be showing you a flashing green light so it'll draw a little bit of power but i think i jumped on the website and it said it would take two years to drain the battery down with this green flashing light so that ain't no problem the flashing green light means it's a okay and we just put the power to the bm on and then it goes from a flashing green light to a solid green light so you know you've wired it in correctly so that's brilliant so they do in the kit give you a couple of blanking plugs so I've put those on two of the circuit cables and I've just used another two connector cables uh, leaving the wires on that shouldn't be an issue unless somebody's got anything else to say please put it in the comment section down below because I haven't uh, made any of these circuits live so there should be no power coming through here so shouldn't be any problem with these uh, end of the wires there so that will just stop all the dust and stuff getting into the ends of the plugs because there is a little bit of dust under here and it's only two weeks old and that's the other cable that we're not going to be using and that's got the rdc blanking plug on the top so that one is redundant if you had the rdc unit then that would be utilized or well, the rdc unit then that one would be utilized as well so there's the easy can uh, what you need to do is jump onto the website and then put your little uh, cable in here into your laptop whether it be Windows or Mac and then just go through the registration process and then update the software in here it's a very very simple process 
I actually did it before I, I uh, started um, connecting it to the bike. That will take you about five minutes to do that. You do get one of these spare little plugs in here because this little blanking plug is <laughs> ripe for losing actually. So it's a shame they haven't got a proper uh, cap going over the whole of the, the end here, but that is all waterproof and dust sealable as well. But uh, yeah, you may, got to make sure you're not going to lose that. So what I'm going to do, I did have the RDC cable Velcro to here, but I think for the time being, I'm just going to put all these wires under here, all these blanking plugs, etc. I'm really surprised how little space there is under the back of the BMW actually. That's fine. And then the RDC plug, I'm just going to tuck it. There's two uh, plugs here, BMW plugs. So I'm just going to tuck it down there actually. So that should be fine. It's on the Velcro. That's all good. There's a little bit of a faffery there, but that should be fine. And then that's my plug for my rear electric seat. Good, you've got the power there. Just go to the website and uh, register the unit and update the latest software. And then that's it, job done. Well, that's it folks. We finally come to the end of the installation video. I reckon best guess, yeah, 45 minutes. I reckon 30, 45 minutes, cup of tea, packet of biscuits, take your time and you should be fine with that. Uh, the seats are all now on. There's no snagging. There's no, uh, it's not compressing down onto the uh, units on the back there. Happy with that. The right hand uh, seat support down here, the high and low uh, seat support uh, rubber, uh, the way I've run the cables there, both the Optimate and hex easy can zip tie them beneath that uh, yeah absolutely no problems there whatsoever happy with the way all the cabling's run so all that remains for me to do is spend some more money as and when i've got some to buy some accessories to fit to the four circuits on here but i will be fitting a enough camera that was on my honda africa twin that was the k2 uh, as and when so uh so yeah if i've made any howling mistakes please put them in the comments section down below um yeah as ever, ride safe, and we'll see you again soon in the next video. And yeah, bye. Take care for now. I've had enough. Take care for now. Bye. Boof.